Good morning, how you guys doing? I'm attorney Roger P. Foley and uh, today I'm gonna to talk to you about what to expect in a criminal consultation. Now, the reason I'm even talking about this topic is this morning I'm, I'm heading out to Broward County for a case. I had a motion to suppress and I'm rushing, right? I'm, I'm rushing to make sure that I'm on time. I think being on time if I have a hearing at 10 o'clock, I think I should be there at 9.45. That's my personality. Anyway, so seven o'clock this morning comes around and someone calls the office. And I go, eh, you know what? I'm handling the do dogs. I'm dealing with stuff on the property. I answer and I start to talk. So the first person um, tells me that they have a domestic incident that occurred. That domestic incident lasted over the weekend and that police were called, but the caller gave their statement and they wanted to retract their statement. Um, but the perpetrator, the alleged, well, what would soon be the alleged defendant wasn't on scene, um, they fled. So let, let's just go with your basic domestic violence and your domestic, your basic domestic violence is, and I hate to make a gender uh, stereotype, but it tends to be the guy, you know, beating up the girl. Not every time, because I've had a lot of the other way around, but it tends to be, you know, the, the guy touch, struck, punch, kicked, spit on, whatever, um, their significant other or female. Okay, so, but this caller tells me that, you know, they allege that I battered them, that I held them down, that I choked them out. So now I know that I'm dealing with a at least a felony strangulation. Now, when the cops called the individual, they didn't answer. And this is very common. It's and, and I joke about it to some extent. I don't joke about domestic violence, guys, but I joke about when, when people want to ignore things. It's sort of like if my dog looks into the corner when I'm, you know, upset with him for, you know, tearing up toilet tissue or something, and the dog looks, and he looks the other way, right? If he can't see me, somehow he thinks I can't see him. But the reality is, is you can be seen. Even if you run and hide, right? The police still do their job, right? And what is their job? Their job is to get statements. They get a 911 call because obviously the the victim, the significant other, the female in the situation calls 911. Oh my goodness. You know, my boyfriend, my husband, my significant other, whatever, just choked me and beat me and punched me and they broke the they broke the window and, and they smashed my stuff and they took my phone and all of those little statements amount to elements of crime. So you could have a simple misdemeanor domestic battery. You can have strangulation because hey, I couldn't breathe. That's it, strangulation, right? If took a phone, then um the charge is escaping me as I'm rushing out today. Um, but they interfered with uh, with contacting the police. That's another third degree felony. So I know that this person's in, in trouble, right? So I explained to the gentleman, listen. Oh, because the person says, look, I, I don't see anything. We can't get in touch with anyone. Of course you can't. You, you don't know the system, right? You're not an attorney. You don't work every day. If it was whatever your job is, like if I go look at the AC, AC unit, I may not see something that's Captain Obvious to the AC guy. So I said, look, there's a process. The state attorney is going to receive a packet of information from the police department and they're gonna review that. And most of the time, they're going to rubber stamp it. And that rubber stamp is gonna mean that there's gonna now be an arrest warrant out for the person. And police, law enforcement are gonna show up in force, you know, at their home or at their business uh, in a time to be determined in the near future. And then, now the bell is rung. So this is what I did, I'm gonna, I'm super, you know, to the point. Sir, it's gonna charge you $3,500 if I get involved right now. Well, what are you gonna do for $3,500? I'm gonna find out who the state attorney is. I'm gonna call the detective or, or the 
the arresting officer on it, say that the, you know, the, the, the alleged victim obviously has tried contacting them to amend their statement. And I'm going to listen to my client and try to humanize them based on that information and use case law to contact the case filing attorney, the person who makes the decision whether to arrest them and you know have formal charges filed and information um, or to not. So it's 3,500. Now, if they get arrested, that 3,500 would go towards the actual case. So I said to him, he's like, okay, well, I, you know, uh, listen, no, no problem. I just want to let you know, and I'm not the only guy in town, but if the case gets filed and you're charged with strangulation and battery and the other third degree felony for, you know, taking the phone, ripping the phone out of, you know, your significant other's hands. Well, now you're looking at a 7,500 to $10,000 case. So think about it. No pressure from me. Call 10 other people. Um, but realize that I may be able to save the day at 3,500. Yeah, but my, my significant other, my wife doesn't want to press charges. That's nice, but did you realize the sentence that's within the statute that says it's not up to the alleged victim whether charges are brought? Well, she doesn't want to bring charges. She doesn't bring charges. The state attorney's office brings charges, right? So the, the, is anyone at the state attorney not going to bring charges? If if you get a phone call, help, help, my, 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 my boyfriend just beat me up. Uh, he just broke the door down. He strangled me. I almost passed out. I tried to call you guys. He ripped the phone out of my hand and smashed it. I got a black guy. They took photos of the person. And this is all information that, you know, the gentleman gives to me. Right? So I'm only using their information. So I'm going, look, buddy, like, it's, a, it's coming. It's coming. J just think about this. Make believe, for instance, one moment, folks, right? that you do nothing. You're the dog that looks into the corner, right? You do nothing. Someone at the state attorney's office gets that, right? They get a police report that says, these are all the things that happened. We didn't have contact with the person. What do you guys want to do? What do you think the prosecutor's going to do? They have physical evidence. They have a smashed phone, right? They have someone bruised. They have marks on their neck, right? They say that they 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 tried to call, that they strangled, that they the state attorney is going to file charges. So now while you're looking in the corner, right? When you're preoccupied, what do we, you know, we're, we're in September right now. So what's the next holiday? The next main holiday is Halloween or Thanksgiving or Christmas, right? Right around the corner. They're either gonna show up in a couple of days or they're gonna show up when they have the time and they do it. And then what? It's right when you're about to go on a cruise or airport or you're going to a funeral or you're going to your kids, you know, soccer game or football game or whatever it is. Don't don't blow it off. So I explained it to the guy. and He goes, OK, I, I'll let you know. Okay, OK, so that was caller number one. Now, I, even though I do a basic five minute consultation on my my second caller that called, said uh right as i was walking out the door says uh good morning i'm uh trying to find an attorney uh to help me with um some false arrest charges and i go okay um what county did it happen in and they say they tell me the county and i go okay well what what are the actual charges because the Florida statute doesn't have false arrest charges, right? That, that's not listed as a category. So the person proceeds to tell me that they have a, a battery on a law enforcement officer, are resisting a, a, with violence, uh, and a fleeing and eluding. Okay, <laughs> so they jump to false charges. Now, look, I get it, folks. There are people who are let's say falsely arrested like is it just like when i think about those facts i read between the lines right is there a case that someone is running away from police in their vehicle and you get the wrong person 
I guess it's possible, but what are those odds? Like lottery, right? Then resisting without violence. Okay, maybe the officer got aggressive, right? Right. Oh, Bat Leo, hit the cop, pushed the cop, touched the cop, spit on the cop. Okay, could be totally a lie from law enforcement. I get that, I've had those cases, right? But how are you falsely charged? Were you falsely not running from them? Like, how does an officer determine? How far do you have to drive? I mean, if an officer is behind you, and again, this, I don't know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saluting law enforcement, but I also salute law enforcement at times, right? Depends on how they act individually, each fact pattern. So if I'm driving down the turnpike like I am right now, and I'm doing, I'm, you know, I'm doing the speed limit, but if I was doing 90 or 100, and a police officer got behind me and they stayed behind me and they put their overhead lights on and I didn't pull over and I sped up and then I didn't stop and then they put their sirens on. How is that a false arrest, right? And again, I don't know the facts, but instead of the gentleman starting off with, look, I have battery on a law enforcement, I have resisting um, an officer with violence, I have fleeing and eluding, and I think he even said something else, like a, like a minor drug charge. You're jumping from zero to, hey man, I'm going to buy a lotto ticket and I just won you know, $200 million. Like that, that's a big jump. How about, you know, I was arrested for this and I don't think that all the charges are accurate. But I falsely arrested, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how many times I've had a false arrest. I've had trumped up charges, but it could just be vernacular. So, you know, I, I'm not jumping on too much. So I explained to the to the gentleman, listen, I can't do it right now. I'm on my way to the courthouse. I have court every morning from, you know, 8 a.m. to 11. I usually do my consults in the afternoon um, and towards the evening time. Go to my website, rpfoley.com. And if you go to the contact us page, there is a up to five, zero minutes, 50 minutes, uh, criminal in-depth criminal consultation. Because I feel like, you know, most attorneys just kind of get the gist of what's happening and then they, they might throw out a price or they try to, you know, get you in. And I don't need you to come to my office. If you want to talk, I'm going to charge you this much and I'm going to walk through the facts of it. Why do I do that? I don't think I can do that in five to 15 minutes and really give you the attention you deserve. But what attention do you deserve? I can't spend 50 minutes with every single person that calls my office because the reality is, is you get people who kick the tire. Um, and I run from Orlando, Okeechobee, Key West, Miami, Broward, Palm Beach, Morton, St. Lucie. Um, I'm all over the place. So I, I got cases up in, in Lake City. So there, there's got to be a time constraint and I try to make it fair. I think $150 for approximately an hour of an attorney's time is, is pretty fair. Um, so and that guy said, okay, I, I, I'll, I will do that. And I, I kind of believe that he will. But sometimes it just shuns people away. And I, and I get that. And I, I, I take that chance because I think of myself as a little bit more of a concierge type attorney. Jeez, um, that was loud. Um, you know, not everyone's going to hire me. Not everyone can afford me. Um, and you have your choice of lawyer. If you want a lawyer that answers the phone, that talks to you, that goes through, that files motions, that fights the, the battle, I, I tend to check off a lot of boxes. Um, and I'm sure there's some things I'm not good at, you know. So, but, but I work hard and if I don't know something, I will uh, reach out to another attorney. I've subcontracted other attorneys to help me, you know, on a case before, like, hey, I'm gonna need help on this motion. You have more knowledge of it than I do. And I, you know, I, I know I don't get anything for free. I can't just call lawyers and say, hey, uh, I need you to work on this for six hours with me. No, I, I gotta pay them. So, um, and don't think that there's any like uh, friends and family rate. You know, I'm not charged, it's the client. So they're like, hey man, I, you know, I, I charge, you know, 400 bucks an hour. 
um, and you know, blah, 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 here's a bill for 2,400 bucks. So, you know, I take that out of my fee because I'm about getting the best result possible. So anyway, what do you get in a free consultation? I don't know. I guess call around, do the free consultation with whoever will give it to you and, um, and then contact my office and do the 50 minute consultation for 150 bucks and uh, write about the difference on my YouTube channel. If it's not a difference, then hey, I'm not worth it. If you see a significant difference, then I don't know, maybe you can talk about it. So anyway, um, we'll see. Don't look in the corner and, and act like a dog thinking that everything will just be okay. It won't if police have been contacted. They will bring the case against you. Anyway, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Have a great day. See ya.